doing a video review of the Iftron Clearview Racing Receiver. Um, it was released early in 2016, and it, it's awesome. It's an awesome receiver. Um, and so I guess I'm going to start with uh, what comes in the box. So first off is well, the receiver, obviously, and then it comes with uh, one cable and a power cable, and you can you basically solder your own lead. Um, I made mine with XT60. And then uh, for optionally, you can get this future-proofing cable, and this is how you update your receiver for the latest firmwares that they release. And also, uh, if you do want to buy the Spectrum Analyzer later, you can add it through that. Um, so as far as the actual receiver, um, it's in a standard nice case um, that Iftron receivers usually come with. For a size comparison, here's my wallet. So it's just a little bit bigger. Um, it's, a, it's got antennas on both sides, so you need two antennas to use it. Um, as far as connections, so it has two video outputs. Um, those are both the same output. You can hook one up to your goggles and then one to a DVR or, or one to like a, if you're racing at an event, they might want to record it so you can hook it up to their DVR or a big screen or something like that, which is pretty fun. Um, uh, as far as power input, six to 17 volts DC input. So that's two to four S LiPo. Um, the menu button is still on the right bottom. So that little red button right there. And then uh, there's two connections on the end of here. The, the bigger one right there, that's where your future proofing cable goes. And then this is, uh, if you had the pro version, the buzzer sound goes out of that. Um, it, the racing receiver has two LEDs for which antenna it's using. So you can see like if, if, you're, if you have two Omni antennas and it's always favoring the left antenna, you might think that you might wanna look into seeing if your right antenna might be bad. Um, I guess that's it for the, out, uh, for the receiver. Um, so this is the, re the racing receiver. It's at, at a lower cost than the pro version, and also due to increased um, sales of the racing receiver, they've also lowered the price quite a bit. So you can check out the current price on the website if you want. Um, otherwise, you can go ahead and watch part two of the video, which is going to be the, um, the menu system and sort of the improvements they have made in the latest version. So I hope you enjoy and continue watching if, you, if you're interested. This is the next part of the Iftron Clearview Racing Receiver Review. Um, so this part, I'm going to be going over the on-screen menu and sort of the options and, and updates of the newest, latest firmware for the Iftron Clearview Receiver. So the first thing you can do is you can plug in the receiver. The receiver automatically powers up, and you can tell it's the racing one with that little logo on top. And also on the right top there is the version. So that's the latest version right now. Um, they might take off the B or something. They'd sent this to me just to make sure everything was working and it looks perfect. Um, so yeah, it, you can update your firmware with the future proofing cable. I think it's less than $10. Um, so that's really easy. And if you're thinking about getting a racing receiver, I de definitely recommend getting that because they've been releasing a lot of updates for the racing firmware. So this latest update has, they sort of simplified the menu a whole ton and made it really easy to use. Um, so if we go into the menu by double tapping the red button, um, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to sh show you the frequency, and that's 5880, that's the one currently selected. Um, as soon as you scroll up to that, it'll start doing the spectrum analyzer. Um, the spectrum analyzer is optional on the racing receiver. I do not know the price off the top of my head, but I'll post that in the video description. Um, so the spectrum analyzer will basically tell you what channels are being used. Um, and I, uh, when I tested this at a race, uh, you could differentiate five different racers and also see their channels. Um, and that was in the pro version where you can do it by channel. The racing version, they simplified it and it's automatically scanning. As you can see, I'm not touching the receiver right now. So it's automatically scanning and it tells you the frequency and sort of the noise floor. So it says over negative 55 dBm. That means that like your quad would be powered up right next to you. And then, so one thing you can do is either uh, to change your frequency, you can do it right here, and you can also do it, I'll show you later, um, with, a, with a quicker method. Um, so then we can go to the setup menu, and what they did with the setup menu is actually made it really simple. So the first option is where you want your OSD, so I'll go ahead and see, show you that, so you can put it in those six positions. The next thing is whether you want to display Clearview or, so the Clearview icon, it displays Clearview icon when it has a Clearview lock. Um, it t usually takes like a second or two to get that lock on the signal. 
and if it does, then uh, that means that you're, you're going to get way better video than um, before Clearview Lock. So that'll show you if you have Clearview Lock or not, and also your frequency. Um, the next thing is if you want to change NTSC or PAL. Um, pretty self-explanatory. This activate icon is if, say, you bought a racing receiver a while ago, and now you want to upgrade it, and upgrade by, what I mean by that is you bought the spectrum analyzer. In here, you actually can type in like this, some sort of serial number. Um, I can, there's probably, a, it'll be explained in the, in the manual, I bet. Um, I'm not sure where that is, but it'll be explained on how to do that if you bought the spectrum analyzer later and want to upgrade. Um, so you can do that there. Also, if you have a, um, a future improver cable, this is sort of how you would update your receiver for the newest firmware, such as this firmware that's just, that's just been released. Um, there is how you go back to your video. And then, so here's the stored frequencies. By default, it comes stock with the race band, eight race band channels, um, which is what multi-GP is sort of, I think uh, they're sort of tending to do that soon. So those come stock with race band, but if you want to, you can change them to any other channel. Say you run immersion gear, um, like immersion transmitters, you can go ahead and change that to the immersion band. Um, and you can, I'll show you, so you can sort of shift the channels around. Um, so that's how you change the number. So I'll change this back to fit five. Um, and then you can do that and hit okay when you're done. And there's all your channels. And it'll, auto, it'll automatically sort them by channel when you exit. So I'll go ahead and go back to video. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm transmitting on 5880, and I'm going to go find that channel. So go over to 5880. There we go. And now we go to video, and there's the transmitting stuff. So that's one way to change the channel. Another way is if you, so say you're on your live video. Um, Go ahead and hold down the button. Now it says scan mode. So now you single tap and it changes the channel. It'll tell you your channel immediately and also tell you that it's in scan mode. So, th so this is if you're spectating and you want to go find, um, if you know all the racers are on race band or at least on your pro eight program channels, then you can go ahead and find them here. Um, and yeah, so now you see that it has a clear view lock. It took about a second there. And now it's a clear view lock and, and you're ready to go and you've got video. So um, I guess that's it for the new and improved OSD menu. Um, if you have any questions, just post a comment in the YouTube video or uh, send Iftron an email and I'm sure they'd be happy to help out. Uh, have a great day.